from the first line of the book why establishes Antonite and her family as outsiders which means both Ahmet and Christophine are from Martinique a French not an English so uh, they are outsiders Annette Creole ancestry makes her an outsider to all races. Both the white people who close ranks live in the coast face on the outside of the circle and the back black people who refer to the family as white cockroaches. So like everyone uh, used to uh, keep them away because of uh, Annette's Creole ancestry and um, the black people uh, see them as white cockroaches. So everyone use Antonite family as the other. Calibri thus becomes an island by itself within the islands of the West Indies. So Calibri is where they live and it is an island of the West Indies. The status of being on the outside is compounded for Antonite since her mother favor her sickly brother over her for whom her mother shows little affection. Antonite is essentially left to fend herself with occasional period of closeness to her aunt Cora and Christophine, the family servant. So Antonite is the main protagonist of this novel and Antonite mother is Annette and Antoinette uh, has a brother and uh, uh, he is uh, physically disabled so Annette loves uh, his son more than Antoinette so Antoinette feels that there is no one to take care of her and uh, her mother favors her sickly brother over her and there was no one to show any affection to her so Antoinette was very lonely she was alone she has no one to spend her time with and um, uh, her only companion was her aunt Cora and the family servant Christopher when Antoinette does find friendship in Tia it is with a black girl whose family is also not from Jamaica However, as soon as Tia realizes Antoinette has money, while the family is poor, they have more than Tia, uh, their friendship dissolves. Her deception of Antoinette, which includes stealing her dress and money, shows Tia is unable and perhaps unwilling to truly reciprocate Antoinette's friendship. Despite her youth, she recognized the difference between herself and Antoinette, and like the others around her, she spawns the curse way. So, the only friend she has got in her childhood was Tia. Tia was a black girl. And uh, Antoinette was very close to Tia. Antoinette really loved and valued their friendship. But Tia, on the other hand, deceived her, deceived Antoinette. And she stealed her dress and money. And she um, has gone away from Antoinette. And that was a very shocking experience for Antoinette. Antoinette recognized the cruelty Tia displays towards her and decides it is better to be on her own. However, when trouble erupts at Calibri, Antoinette turns to Tia and wants to be like her. It is only when blood is running down her face that Antoinette realizes that Tia has thrown a stone at her. Antoinette requires violence to learn the lessons that she personally and not just her family is in exile. For this reason, while she finds the Caribbean landscape beautiful, she often feels bewildered and overwhelmed by it. So, after that, Antoinette recognizes the cruelty of Tia, that Tia has thrown a stone on her head and she was covered with blood all around. Uh, so she really understood the nature of other people. Like Antoinette was a very um, innocent girl and Antoinette really valued a friendship or companionship of others. So all these things are destroyed from her childhood onwards and she is still facing the same thing.
It seems the only person who does not understand and appreciate others' tension is Mr. Mason. The Englishman came to the West Indies to increase his fortune, and it appears he has been successful on this trend. However, he does not recognize the socio-economic issues driving the mood of the people, though he is warned by Anat and Onkora. Mr. Mason insists the ex-slaves are too damn lazy to be dangerous. When, while he capitalizes from the downfall of, of the previous slave owners, he believes himself impervious to a similar fate. Annette's fears anchor at him, leading her to attempt at murder is almost understandable. His inaction causes the death of her son and a grief so intense to cause her madness. Reader familiar with Jane Eyre will see some of the events of the novel prefigured here. So, actually we have to uh, read uh, Jane Eyre before uh, reading White Sagas or Sea because um, uh, both of these novels are interconnected. Uh, so, while uh, here there is a character called Mason. Mason is a husband of Annette and um, uh, Mason was a very successful uh, businessman and he wanted to increase his fortune by the slave trade and uh, one cobra and uh, Annette everyone warned him about the slave trade and it is very dangerous because um, it was a time that a uh, slave trade has become illegal and the black people were protesting against it but Mason uh, didn't take it into consideration and that really affected their fate and um, it caused a uh, wild agitation amongst the black people they protested against them and they burned Antoinette house while the was uh, burning uh, her brother the disabled kid died in that incident and um, Annette was very disturbed by that Annette really hate um, Mr. Mason for doing all these things because of Mason and his um, greed for fortune has resulted in the death of her son and uh, their house and everything and she tried to murder Mason and uh, uh, all these things uh, really disturbed the mental stability of Annette. A number of times in this section, Antoinette is victimized or insulted. Before her mother's wedding, people were degrading Annette and wondering why Mr. Mason would marry her. Tia and others say cruelly th cruel things to Antoinette, who all the while does practically nothing to defend herself. Although she seems to realize she is being insulted, she also seems to realize it is useless to fight back. At the end of the section, Coco the parrot is burned and falls to his death. Because Coco's wings have been clipped, he is unable to fly away and protect himself. Instead, he must rely on others. In many ways, Antoinette is like Coco. She is young, beautiful and white, all of which should be assets to her. But her wings have been clipped in the sense that she is unable to protect herself and has no one to look out for her. Her father is dead and her mother is preoccupied with her own grief. Her later behavior or lack of it should be judged with this beginning in mind. So, um, here uh, Antoinette is a victim. Um, she is always insulted by the white people and as well as by the black people. So, there is no one uh, to support her or to stand by her side. And uh, Mr. Mason is not Antoinette's father. Mr. Mason is Annette's um, uh, second husband. And um, people were always degrading Annette uh, about her second marriage and all those things. And they also say cruel things to Antoinette as well. And um, while, while the black peoples were burning their house, 
everyone was uh, telling bad things about her everything everyone was uh, criticizing them and even tia her best friend uh, also tells bad things about her when their house was burning and um, on that house there was a pet parrot and uh, whose name is coco and coco was also burned during this incident actually coco is symbolic of antonite itself so coco is a bird and uh, it can easily fly away from um and the fire but what happened is that it's a uh, uh, wings were clipped and same thing is applicable to uh, antonite as well she is a very beautiful young girl uh, but what happened to her is that her wings are also clipped she is not able to protect herself so this parrot is symbolic of antonite herself multiple image of death are presented in the first page of the book uh, mr literal and its neighbor and only friend kills his dog before killing himself he does so out of desperation since his fortune like the coast face has been lost as a result of the liberation of the slaves and the never ending wait for the promised compensation from the english and its horse has been poisoned and flies best a bus around it picking it as they wish this death ultimately leads to an empty house next door and more isolation for annette and her family the smell of dead flowers even pervades their neglected garden which antonite compares to the garden of eden large and beautiful as a garden in the bible so there are many portrayal of uh, death in the novel and uh, there was uh, one neighbor called miss literal and he killed his dog before his uh, suicide and um, there was also a shocking scene in this novel which was the poisoning of anat's um, horse anat how anat's horse was very dear to her she really loved it but after the death of the horse anat was really disturbed by all those things her mental uh, condition got even worse and um, after that um, they all feel uh, very isolated uh, the smell of dead flowers in their garden were also uh, causing very difficulty for them there are parts of gulibri antonite has yet to discover and doing so bring her joy the biblical story says if eats from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil after being convinced to do so by the snake despite being commanded by god not to she then has adam do the same because adam and if defy god's command they are deemed unworthy of paradise and are exiled from the garden of eden they will now need to work the land to support themselves like if antonia discover a snake on one of her nature walks The snake, along with the neglected wild gardens at the Calibri estate, adds a sense of danger. The scene foreshadows both the family's exile from Calibri and Antonite's more intimate knowledge of evil. So, this is the big little uh, reference of the story. As Antonite awakens, on Cora is there. It is one of the few times an adult shows true affection for Antonite, and she soaks in the attention and feels safe. However, Antonite gets rejected yet again when she visits her mother, who acts violently when she realizes again that Perry is dead. So Perry is uh, her brother. Then Aunt Cora goes to England, leaving Antonite in the convent school. She receives little attention, direction, or affection throughout her childhood. The loneliness she feels from being outside the community is compounded by the lack of attention she gets from her family and leaves her feeling unguarded and unsafe without a place of refuge. So, um, all these. are the things that antonite feels uh, faced from her childhood and now she is in a convent school and there is no one to take care of her antonite is perceptive regarding the feeling of those around her when she visits her mother antonite recognizes she is looking for peri 
and is unable to bring herself to say Piria's died. When she wakes up and sees Ankara, Antoinette again shows sensitivity as she immediately recognizes with just a look the strain her aunt has been under. Before she is tall, she also perceives that Piri is dead. As soon as Mr. Mason comes to see her, Antoinette recognizes something is different based on his behavior and intuits he has a plan in store for her. Her intuition and feeling of insecurity make her overly sensitive. She cries a number of times, most memorably when she goes to the convent after being bullied. Even the nuns who have who act in a kindly manner find her crying excessive. Antoinette has been through a number of ordeals at an early age and is therefore an easy mark. She is often taken advantage of and is incapable of fighting back. Instead, she breaks down. Her sensitivity makes her more vulnerable to attacks of all sorts, just as it was during her ill-fated marriage causing her to overreact and to do so in ways that are emotional rather than logical. Antoinette learns while in convent school that whoever harms the unfortunate or unhappy insult, Christ himself, for they are his chosen ones. Like Christ, Antoinette is destined to suffer. Unlike him, she will not do so meekly. While in the convent school, Antoinette has little interaction with the other students. Nothing is noted after her initial conversation with Louis de Plana, nor is the interaction with the nuns extensive. More of Antoinette's time is spent contemplating scenes, hearing stories about scenes, and learning how to sew and other such tasks. Despite this existence, Antoinette seems condemned with the convent school. Safety and security matter more to her than love, human interaction or a sense of place. She can deal with loneliness and alienation in part because she has never known anything different. Second part. From Rochester's very first word, so it was all over, he appears uncertain, uncomfortable and unhappy. Rochester implies he has simply been led along. I agreed, as I had agreed to everything else, and his lack of power annoys him. He implies he has been manipulated, which he has his father and brother refused to give him enough of the family's inheritance for him to survive independently, and he resents them. A mystery surrounds him, and the fact that he is in debt implies that his family is right now to trust him. Rochester claims that entering into the marriage for financial reason while sick and without much knowledge of the girl is akin to selling his soul and in many ways he is correct. However, the arrangement is unusual and dangerous for Antonida as well. Wealthy women in the 19th century were usually married with a dowry that was an incentive for marriage but was also financial protection or insurance for them in case their husband proved to be stingy or unable to provide. The money also revert to them if they are widowed, while if there is an heir, only the father's wealth is passed down. In the case her stepbrother has given Rochester all of her money with no legal reservation. Leaving her completely exposed in the case of Rochester's death, a divorce or even the birth of an heir. Rochester is not used to being an outsider and is uncomfortable in the role. While the couple passes Miss Ackard, Antoinette explains that people presumably outsiders were killed there. This explanation heightens Rochester's discomfort. In addition, Rochester is envies Antoinette and her comfort with the surrounding. She interacts with the people, appreciates the beauty of the area, smiles comfortably, speaks the native language, and so on. Antoinette is in control and Rochester is clearly uncomfortable in a subordinate role. It is after all the part he has left England to escape. There is some situational irony then when he uses England to attempt to regain his footing and assert his dominance. Even England has made him an outsider. The novel will not even give him the dignity of a name. Unlike Rochester, Antoinette goes to lengths to try make the best of their marriage and please her husband. 
this portion of the novel is described from another point of view so that reader does not know her feeling about the marriage the only clue the reader has is that earlier when her stepfather hinted at removing her from the convent and having parties and visitors she felt uneasy and fearful her optimistic behavior could be genuine or it could be an attempt to set her new husband at ease the reader simply does not know what we do know is that she tries to set to just at his ease and make him feel comfortable with the surroundings make him feel safe as she always longed to do she shares her feeling about the land and the house with rochester in the hope that he too will enjoy and appreciate them as she does antonet shows a nurturing quality towards rochester as she brings him water tells him to put on his coat and wipes his forehead when he is sweating she is concerned about his feeling and his health when rochester declines the invitation to caroline's house Antonet accepts his decision and then it shares her fears with Rochester in an attempt to help him understand her. She praises him, "You look like a king and emperor." Antonet instigated the toast to their happiness and it is she who tries to make their happiness real. So Antonet was really trying to work out their marriage. She really loved Mr. Rochester. and uh, she tried to make him comfortable and she also praises him by telling that you look like a king and emperor so uh, while like while calling him an emperor shows that uh, she really wants to comfort him she uh, really wants to wants him to love her back as she loves him from their first interaction rochester and christopher find do not care for each other Rochester declares of her that she seemed insignificant and senses Christophine disapproves of him. The two stare each other down and when Rochester looks away, Christophine smiles. She wins the battle of wills in the first encounter and Rochester declares her scary. When Antoinette declares her feeling for Christophine, it sets up Christophine as a rival to Rochester who wants to control his wife. The battle between Rochester and Christophine will continue and ultimately their different vision for how to handle Antoinette will clash. Rochester's instability has led him to be driven by pride. He believes he has fooled everyone in Spanish town society by making a good marriage, yet people recognize he has ended the marriage for financial reasons. Rochester feels that feels and resents the disdain shown him by servants and other black people. who sees his insecurity it is their eyes that so disturb rochester and those same eyes do not hide their disapproval many of the white people are englishmen who come to the west indies to make money just like rochester and mr mason they have learned to ignore the natives as they conduct business and to avoid trouble marrying and donate is simply another financial deal therefore they do not bat an eye at this interaction Ultimately Rochester is fooling no one least of all Antoinette the part of the novel shows how perceptive she is is she able to see through him when discussing why she called off the marriage and when he says it is because Rochester laughed with Richard Mason after promising to keep her safe she sees in Rochester the same thing she saw in her stepfather a foolish british businessman who does not understand the native environment and it's in her and dangers when mr mason was in control her life was destroyed now her future husband is laughing off the danger as he did still like the mother and donate has few options her step brother wants to marry her off and thinks little of her calling her the little fool which at mason sees and donate as her burden and he unloads her onto Rochester the marriage is purely a business transaction with limited options and Tonate accepts Rochester should she have rejected him Richard Mason would have found someone else to un- unload her on with little choice and Tonate merely hopes Rochester will keep her safe like her soon to be husband and Tonate expectation for the marriage are minimal Both Rochester and Antoinette personalities are deeply affected by the time of day and weather. 
during the day antoinette is pleasant and happy she laughs easily and smiles often however at the night she is sad and dramatic and often talks of death antoinette had a sad and lonely childhood that left her fearful and unhappy and she wants her husband to make her feel safe during the day she is able to give him what she perceives he wants in a wife but she feels he is withholding something from her especially at night when they share a physical relationship but when rujesh is not as intimate with her as she wants him to be during the moments when she is most vulnerable he does not give her the emotional safety and security she craves and so this shows her mental instability she is very happy during the day and as we know night um, brings an image of darkness and it shows the painful or the sad thing she has faced in her life so at night she used to be a little disturbed rochester's days and nights are both submerged in the physical he enjoys the food and drink offered by christophine on the bathing pool where he can be either alone or with antonette basking in the warmth of the island the smell of the night flowers intoxicated him but he remains uneasy about the islanders and the island and he withholds the emotional support antonette craves like antonette rochester has been impacted by his childhood Rochester believes his brother was the loud child and his father and brother have colluded against him. And in its brute honesty about wanting to die before meeting Rochester and her willingness to do so at his command makes Rochester uncomfortable. Just as Andonet seems to be different at night from how she is during the day, Rochester goes through changes as well. There are many times when Rochester will praise one moment and insult the next the land the people the antonite in one scene he is tossing their love and happiness and in the next he is saying he feels nothing for her the change in emotion is not because of something antonite did or do not do it's natural paranoia and mistress prevent rochester from fully enjoying the moment he insists his, he feels nothing for antonite yet this does not prevent him from having relation with her repeatedly the back and forth of the emotion introduce some situational irony since rochester comment on the emotion of the island people and how they cannot control them the essential accept of the island impacts both antonite and rochester whereas the island allows antonite to overcome her fear and feel vulnerable and even happy rochester who often seems cold and heartless is overcome with them physical need for antonite he has ability to bring her physical satisfaction through his him and he reveals in it his destruction of flowers delicate and beautiful like antonite foreshadows his control and dominance over antonite rochester will control and break her all because he can so on these parts uh, we are seeing the real nature of rochester is actual behavior is coming out Death and dying are mentioned repeatedly in the section and Donate is obsessed with the topic and is even willing to die what is uh, which is what Rochester wants even moths and beetles invade Rochester and Antoinette dramatic dinner table the bugs fly into candles and die right on the tablecloth much like culibri which was consumed in flames just as a couple ignore the bugs and proceed with their dinner Rochester ignores Antoinette's fear also as her stepfather had ignored her mother's warning at her childhood home the relationship between rochester and antonette was has deepened they are regularly intimate with each other and antonette views what they have as love for rochester the physical is still primary but he has some feeling for his wife however he continues to have doubts about his situation and suspect he has been duped Cosby's letter is a piece of the puzzle Rochester has been looking for from the very start of the relationship. He has been uncertain and waiting for the revelation to confirm his doubt. As upsetting as Daniel Cosby's letter is, it also provokes a sense of comfort because Rochester now feels he knows the truth. The same paranoia and mistrust he and Antoinette both feels are confirmed for him as reasonable. 
Significantly, the comfort comes to Rochester in return form. Many of the Black Islanders do not know how to read or write, and the return declaration ca carries connotation of business conducted in written bills and receipts. The law formalized in written code and English civilization educated and well read. Although the letter from Daniel Cosby provides some sense of comfort to Rochester, it also leaves him feeling isolated. Many times when he goes to Antonite in this session of the book, her door is locked or she is otherwise unavailable. By choosing to believe the letter and by receiving the opportunity to have his fears confirmed, he has become separated from her. She too has fears, but hers can be neither confirmed nor denied. In addition, when he comes home after first receiving the letter, Antoinette is acting in a melodramatic way. Her fight with Emily and her cutting up of the sheets seems particularly odd and disturbing to Rochester as he is already viewing her in a different light. Any chance for Antoinette to explain her side of the story is lost. Antoinette's self-isolation along with her lack of explanation in the past allows the story of Daniel Cosby to stand as truth in Rochester's mind. As time passes, Rochester's mistress grows and cements itself in his mind. Antoinette has shown herself to be perceptive in the past. However, in this case, she allows her love and trust of Rochester to blind her. Rochester walk home after receiving the, receiving the letter as well as his walk in the forest deepen his isolation. While walking home, Rochester plucks and destroys an orchid, one of Antoinette's favorite flower. His isolation is emphasized when he returns home and the place is quiet and appears deserted. During Rochester's walk into the forest, he senses that everyone, his father, brother, Richard Mason and Antoinette knew about Antoinette's background and deliberately kept him uninformed. The only person who enlightened him is Daniel Cosby. While in the forest, Rochester senses another person and feels he is being watched. However, the only person he believes is, is, is a zombie. The definition Rochester discovers about a zombie, a living person who is dead, is the way he now views Antoinette. She is no longer a regular person to him, let alone a wife. Instead, she is a burden, a problem waiting to happen. His treatment of her will eventually causes her to fulfill his prediction. Antoinette also feels abandoned in this section. Christophine has been by her side since she was a child. She has supported Antoinette in many ways by sheltering her from her mother and securing her a playmate in Tia. Some of these have been helpful, others have not. Like her namesake Christopher Columbus, her legacy is distinct to be ambiguous and open to interpretation. When Christopher confirms she is living, Antoinette is hurt. However, Antoinette accepts Christopher's living because of Rochester. Antoinette realizes she must decide between the two of them and she chooses her husband in an attempt to make the best of the situation. Despite Christopher's encouragement, Antoinette does not seem capable of taking care of herself. In the very same scene, Antoinette needs Christopher just to put Emily in her place. At every moment, Rochester feels most isolated from and distrustful of her. She is left most dependent upon him. Daniel Cosby claims to tell Rochester about Antoinette's background because it is his Christian duty. Yet, it seems his letter is more about envy and danger. Daniel Cosby says his father did not like him and abandoned him. While Cosby received uh, some financial support, he feels it was not enough. He is living in poverty. Cosby is jealous of Antoinette, who is a wealthy woman with every benefit in the world. He even admits to wanting revenge. Let him wait, my day will come. Despite the letter's jealousy and vengeance, Rochester is tempted to believe it. It allows Rochester to be right about his suspicion, which is more important to him than creating a good life with his wife. Daniel Cosby is an angry and bitter man, although he earlier claimed to be telling Rochester the information about Antoinette and her family because he is a good Christian. It becomes clear by the end of the interview that he is after money. Daniel Cosby writes a second letter and urges Rochester to visit him. 
there is nothing in the second letter and nothing said in the visit that Daniel Cosway did not say in his initial letter. The reason he wants Rochester to visit is because he feels he should be paid for the information he has provided. When Rochester, who is sickened by Cosway, does not want to pay him, Cosway becomes angry and threatening. These actions are reminiscent of how Daniel Cosway describes the interaction between himself and Antoinette's father and of the business he accuses Antoinette and her family of. Despite recognizing these truths, Rochester believes everything he says. The next morning, after Rochester and Emily have relation, Rochester says he is going to give her money. Emily says she plans to go to Rio because there are rich men there, which proves she is far more practical than either Antoinette or Rochester. His coldness that morning causes Emily to want to be away from Rochester as soon as possible and even allows her to pity Antoinette. While Emily had flirted with Rochester earlier, now that she knows him and has seen his behavior, she is completely turned off. Clearly, her motive was revenge on Antoinette for being white and of a higher social class than herself, a situation neither of them created but from which both she and Emily suffer. After she returns with Christophine, Antoinette's behavior toward Rochester is reminiscent of her mother's behavior towards Mason. She acts violently and threatens to harm him. Clearly, she is terrified of what he intends to do with her after already beginning to torture her with Emily. He is prepared with his next step, robbing her of her name and calling her Bertha instead. She now realizes she is utterly within his power and she is terrified in her confusion and hurt. She acts out. Given what he has learned about her past, Rochester views Antoinette's action as crazy, but they are understandable based on the circumstances. Christophane and Rochester have been headed towards a confrontation since they first met. Christophane was Antoinette's protector. She knows her past and what she has gone through and has tried to help her through her challenges. As her husband, Rochester is supposed to have taken on the role of Antoinette's protector, but beginning with the financial arrangements made by Richard Mason, his adoption of that role has been a failure. When Rochester mistreats Antoinette, she returns to her former protector, Christophine. Although Rochester does not truly care about Antoinette, he cannot accept Christophine as his wife's protector and moves that emasculates him as a man, a husband, and a businessman. Rochester is a white European moneyed male. In nearly every way, black Caribbean former slave female Christophine is Rochester's opposite. In addition to gaining independence when the slaves were freed, Christophine has managed to earn money and is financially free. She is also unmarried and therefore not dependent on men. Finally, she has inherited a home from Antoinette's family, so she has property. For all of these reasons, Christophine is not intimidated by Rochester at all. All of this would be enough to make Rochester despise Christophine, resent her, and feel compelled to dominate her the way he dominates Antoinette, except that Christophine also has two advantages. First, she lives outside the law. His communications with Daniel and a local magistrate have warned him that she was arrested in Martinique for an unknown crime and spent time in jail. Second, Christophan is obey, meaning she has religious powers associated with gods of the Caribbean island, gods the slaves brought with them from Africa and whom they believe are angry because of the savage crimes committed on them and their ancestors. For both of these reasons, Rochester is reluctant to confront Christophan directly. Still, he has no intention of bowing to her will. Like the island's emancipated slaves, Christophine has power that can either nurture or destroy the island's people, can choose to work the land, calling forth its lavish fruit, or they can burn down their master's home in act of rebellion and violence. For the most part, Christophine chooses to be a nurturer. She gives Rochester's option so he can appear to have made up his own mind. And she offers him a solution that could allow him to live with grace. She understands the devastating power of a ma white man's pride. And she knows and cares for her charge. Antoinette, 
In other words, she tries to negotiate a peace, as many generations of island people have done. That the effort is doomed should come as no surprise to anyone remotely familiar with history. Rochester's cruelty is never more apparent than when he rejects Christophine's request. It seems Christophine has convinced Rochester he should let her take Antonite. Rochester grows hesitant when Christophine asks him to give Antonite half her money back. He believes it is money Christophine is after. He is all about money and is convinced other people act out of the same need. Yet, it is not until Christophine sees Antoinette will forget about him, marry someone else and be happy that Rochester loses it. And he sees a pang of rage and jealousy shot through me then. Oh no, she won't forget. I laughed. The obvious question is, why should this situation bother Rochester? He will leave the Caribbean with money and no obligations. He will be rid of a woman whom he has said he does not love or understand. The only answer can be that Rochester is a cruel person whose interests are money and power. He has control over Antoinette and he will not relinquish it. The same thirst for power led Rochester to be aggressive and rough, tearing intercourse with Antoinette. It led him to allow Antoinette to grow to need him despite the fact that he felt little for her. It led him to sleep with Emily. He had no interest in her. It led him to Daniel Crispy, whom he had no intention of helping. The thing that drives Rochester to action is power. Like Anthony, Rochester feels a lack of love from his parents, especially from his father, which affects him very differently from how it affects Anthony. For her, the lack of love from her mother makes her needy, weak, and fearful. However, she remains loyal and sympathetic to her mother and defend her. When she shares her mother's background story with Rochester, during which it becomes clear Antonite was greatly upset at how poorly her mother was treated. Rochester's backstory is not given here. It is clear, though, that he feels unloved by his father and believes his brother is favored. Yet, he continues to reach out to his father, share what is going on in his life and seek his approval. While Antoinette wanted love to fill the void left by a lack of parental love. Rochester wanted money and power and approval. Rochester feels his father might appreciate him more if he were self-sufficient. The way he obtained the money and how he uses it leads the reader to believe Rochester's father will continue to be distant from his son. Despite not having money or the love of his father, Rochester still feels superior. After all, Richard Mason pursued him to marry his stepsister, offering Rochester $30,000 with no string attached, despite barely knowing him. Although Rochester complains repeatedly about feeling duped. This transaction is the source of his superiority. He is now a wealthy man and can do as he pleases. Antoinette is the vehicle through which he got his power and letting her go would be tantamount to relinquishing his power. His stated desire to take care of her is another way to control her. Christophine tries to encourage Antoinette to share in her strength, but in reality, the Creole has few of the black women's advantages. The novel's heroine has neither property nor money, thanks to her stepbrother's mismanagement of her affairs. Likewise, she has no family apart from Richard Mason, who has already effectively disowned her. She is completely dependent upon her husband, in many ways a slave to him. And in its fate, seemed to have been sealed before she married. The two people who care for her most, Aunt Cora and Christopher, did not approve of her marriage to Rochester. They argued with Richard Mason and said his father would not approve. Yet Richard Mason does not need the argument and he seals Antoinette's fate. He is happy to have found a match for Antoinette and latches on to the first man he can find, Rochester. Richard Mason convinces himself it is a good match and promises are not needed. Antoinette is traded 
from one man to the other with little choice despite having a number of privileges primarily money and donate never has any power and therefore she is left helpless to suffer her fate it is easy to think christophine is a modern woman rather than an ex slave in 80s in jamaica her belief that a woman should remain independent of a man puts her ahead of her time christophine has her own money and her own home and can therefore do as she pleases she has no need to stay with a man unless she wants to in a twist of situational irony this is not the same as antonet while antonet inherited great wealth she essentially has nothing since her money has been given over to rochester therefore antonet is at his mercy and cannot break free of him antonet has been brought up to be financially dependent upon others and cannot survive on her own The greater reluctance and donate forces to Christopher's plan of leaving Rochester is being on her own just as she counts on others to support her financially and donate struggles emotionally and needs the guidance of others when anath pushed her away as a child it was done because of her own issues and not because she wanted to teach and donate to be independent the impact of her mother's callness towards her has made antonet more in need of emotional love and support while christophine has already taken herself out of the picture antonet will not also abandon her husband this would leave antonet without anyone near her with whom she feels close she is not someone who would do well on her own even if she had the financial means and the reason antonet will not consider leaving rochester is her concern about how other views her there are several scenes in part 1 in which antonet either overhears people talking about her and family or is teased directly antonet also is very aware of how the servant perceive her and is sensitive to their gossip according to daniel cosby's letter her concerns are legitimate Antoinette does not want to live and cause some sort of scandal that would cause people to start talking. She does not have the strength to be the subject of ridicule and is not able to stand up for herself. This session begins and ends on ominous knot. While riding towards Christopher's house, Antoinette passes some rocks entitled Mons Moors, visited once. Even Antoinette's house is impacted by this. as it stumbled after shying away from the rocks this forced antonet to have to walk the rest of the way while riding away on her horse antonet hears a cock crow and says it is for betrayal she wonders who is the traitor antonet says it is christophine although antonet has forced her into such behavior Despite these ominous signs, Antoinette remains determined to use the away or love portion Christophine gave her. Antoinette does not consider Christophine's repeated warning that it will not cause Rochester to love her, but will only cause him to lust after her even more. Antoinette's desperation and the need cause her to deliberately ignore the many signs indicating this plan is bound for failure. the is some situational irony in christopher's prediction of the obey effect since this is essentially how rochester felt before it is only antonets who felt love while rochester felt lust rochester shows interest in antonet and talks with her but he never sees it as love it's not even clear he is capable of love as he shows no warmth towards anyone including his father and brother Rochester may be capable only of lust while Antonet goes to Christopher for obey she hears a fast vision these visions focus on England she is fascinated by the country and views it in a spectacularly positive light curious about the landscape and longing to see it Antonet also feels she could be a different person there however part of her vision of England includes a house where i'll be called and not belonging and on it also sees there will be a bed where i will dream the end of my dream the second part of andonet's vision of england is a premonition in which she envision her own dark miserable ending rochester compares his feeling and emotion to nature his revenge will be like a hurricane that uproots and destroy whatever is in its path 
With Antoinette in a stupor, he has already destroyed her and soon she will be uprooted. As Rochester planned to take her to England, Rochester acts drunk with power as he talks about his ability to control Antoinette. Yet, he wants pity from others. However, Rochester has become an angry and mean bully. His anger goes beyond his marriage and Antoinette as he declares he now hates music and poetry. Rochester believes he is protecting himself and Antoinette. He has been wrong and is saddled with the burden of caring for a lunatic whom he also sees as a drunk and a war. Despite the fact that her behavior mirrors his son, he will take away her instrument, the mirror, and make sure she never dresses or smiles at herself again. Still, Rochester manages to make himself feel good about his decision because he claims to be protecting her, his lunatic. In this posture, Rochester most obviously represents the dysfunctional relationship between European colonizers and the colonies they control. The great swing in Rochester's emotion leaves one doubting his sanity. One moment he is ready to see the best in Antoinette and believes that all the harsh talk with rumors and the next minute he is determined to lock her up. When the nameless boy begins crying, Rochester is baffled and angered by emotion. Again, his attitude resembles the caprice with which the European powers have toyed with the West Indies. He married with no intention of providing for or protecting his wife, as a husband with more, both legally and morally required to do. Now, he plans essentially to kidnap and imprison her, enslaving her just a few years after the slaves in the colonies have been emancipated. Nothing has changed. Despite all that has occurred, Antony remains sensitive to the feeling of others. She is able to understand and empathize with the young boy. She even attempts to assist the boy by telling Rochester the child has learned English. It is only towards Rochester that Antony has gone blank. He has treated her terribly and broken his marriage bond. Antoinette, a feeling uh, she has no choice but to go with Rochester, shows no emotion. What good would it be? He has broken her. Her anger towards Rochester seems justified and it is she in this session who is rational. Throughout the next, many have looked at Antoinette indifferently or negatively. We see the servants have come to appreciate or at least pity her. Baptist, who shows disinterest towards Rochester, shows kindness and courtesy towards Antonite. As people get to know Rochester, their pity for Antonite grows. This is ironic since earlier Rochester felt he deserved pity for being stuck with Antonite, his lunatic. Instead, the pity is for Antonite, who is stuck with Rochester, her cruel husband. Part 3 Grace Poole has never met either Rochester or Antonite. She is British, but she is a woman, so it is uncertain whether she would side with either spouse against the other. While she says, I don't serve the devil for no money, she initially refuses a job, only taking it when her salary is double. And she does her job poorly, drinking and often passing out while caring for her charge. These facts align her with the West Indian servants, but she has neither been enslaved nor emancipated. She remains in the attic sea from the outside world, in darkness, confined to a house that is not her home. It is fitting at the novel's end that we should have a narrator, someone who does not fit anywhere within the novel's established social hierarchy. Oli, she can give us a clear-eyed picture of the Rochesters. Referred to Oli as Mrs. F., the head servant of the household, is an illusion to Mrs. Fairfax from Jane Eyre. In that novel, as in this one, she is a staunch supporter of Rochester who claims his stay in the West Indies have changed him, made him more morose and less forgiving. The reader knows enough to both believe and disbelieve her story. He suddenly returns bitter, but he was not content, and when, we, when he arrived angry at his father and brother and composing letter of indication upon what should be his honeymoon. Adonate is barely recognizable from the last time she is mentioned in the book. Her mental state has dramatically changed and for the worse, she is terribly confused about time, place and self and has become the deranged woman in the attic Charlotte Bronte created in Jane Eyre. Adonate's physical self has changed dramatically. People close to her, like Richard Mason, do not even recognize her. Although Adonate was previously described as beautiful, she is now wild. 
excessively thin and has streaming hair and then it longs for her mirror and her red dress she wants to see herself and bring her all self back and recapture her past grip on life and in its last memory of place is when rochester brought her to england at that point antonette feels trapped and desperate when an employee on the boat refuses to help her antonette loses hope and reacts violently she remembers taking medicine and waking up elsewhere she is convinced that elsewhere is another place on the boat because there is only one window in her room which she cannot access Antoinette believes she is wandering around the boat. She and Grace have many discussion about England, and no matter what Grace says, she cannot convince Antoinette they are in England. After all, Antoinette is convinced that if she were in England, all would be well. If I could be here, I could be well again, and the sound in my head would stop. Antoinette has no idea of how long she has been in England. Time has lost all meaning to her, but time does not matter. time has no meaning and in it memories as well exist outside of time these pieces of memories flicker in and out with nothing clear these memories include the last time she saw santy buying a knife being on the boat a conversation with rochester and so on the confused memory adds to the reader's lack of clarity as well pieces of memory flickers in and out with nothing clear these memories include the last time She saw Sandy buying a knife, being on the boat, a conversation with Rochester, and so on. The confused memory adds to the reader's lack of clarity as well. One has to piece together stories to get a clear picture. For example, at first, it seems Anthony stabbed Richard Nixon as soon as he entered the room to visit her. It is only after Grace shares what Richard said to Anthony that the reader can piece together what happened, having no one to turn it. in her struggle to be free and then it goes into a rage like a caged animal and in its situation of captivity and her violent reaction are reminiscent of her mother and at just as christopher daughter has become like mother it seems mental instability was passed down from mother to daughter however both mother and daughter suffer from extreme circumstances that push them over the edge and drive them to their insanity the relation between antonate and sandy is unclear daniel cox's based letter to rochester is harsh in its description of what happened to antonate and her family yet from the reader's perspective it is essentially accurate as with all of the information cox shares the truth resides in one's perspective how one chooses to interpret the same bit of evidence therefore the reader is left to determine whether antonate and sandy actually had an intimate relationship while in the attic antonate thinks of sandy and notes they kissed often and he would come to see her when rochester was away if antonate was in her right mind this could be explained as innocent however the way it is described leaves the reader unclear as to the true extent of their relationship Antoinette is desperate to find her red dress. Its smells remind her of Jamaica and the past. The dress is a tie to her former self or life. Red, which is symbolic of passion, also symbolizes fire. There are two sides of Antoinette that Rochester has brought out in her. Their romance brought out a passion in her mind that had not existed previously. Now her dreams are filled with fire. a passion that is out of control in the dream antonette is completely lost and is scared of herself she does not recognize herself and does not understand that the ghost she hears talked about is actually her she is convinced the ghost is watching her as antonette creeps about the house she does not think of leaving she is trapped by her dreams and memories the mistreatment she has received throughout her life haunts her and once again she is scared and her need wants to destroy everything she is paranoid she has heard people whisper about her throughout her life a long for revenge when she considers jumping to tia it is not clear if that is an act of revenge or an attempt to get back to jamaica antonette is locked in the attic of the man's home in england 
Grace Paul is a woman hired to watch her. And then it goes from violent to melancholy. She doesn't realize she is in England and has nostalgic memories of Jamaica. She dreams of sneaking downstairs and setting the house on fire. Finally, she takes a candle, descends the stairs and set the house on fire. And that is the climax of the novel. Why it's a guess you see.